And so let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our beloved Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord.
Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Passover. When it was evening, 
he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at the table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, for the Son of Man indeed goes as it was written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and they all ate it. He said to them, Take this, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is the blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. <coughs> then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful, sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass him by. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not have to the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It's enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sin. Get up now, let us go. Then, while he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to Jesus, went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out and against a robber with swords and clubs to seize him? Day after day I was with you. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. 
The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power, coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have you witnesses? You heard this blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maid came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, but he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you're talking about. So we went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, Once again he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, He began to curse and to swear. I do not know about this man whom you were talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes that is, the entire, the whole Sanhedrin held a council. They bound Jesus, led him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to them in reply. You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was in the prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They shouted again. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. <coughs> The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him, and kept striking his head with the reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Syrian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. 
they brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see each to see what each would take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three o'clock in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Elo, Elo, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having brought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseus, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. I think this is where I give you the long homily. 
They said you can opt to not have a homily. Oh, no, we can't. No, no, no. I promise I'll be very quick today, though. Because I think I like processions. Processions are kind of a parade or a, you know, a sense that we're all going in the same direction and we're all doing it together. And that's kind of what the church is about. But hopefully we're going in the same direction and we're taking care of each other. And it's easy to join the procession during the Hosannas and during the happy times. It's harder when we get closer to Calvary and we've got to deal with the stuff of our lives, with the sorrows of our life, with the stuff in our lives that is dying, with the struggles of our life. Oftentimes we get off the procession and we decide we're not going to go any further. But this year, we're being asked once again, how far will you allow the procession to take you? Will you allow it to take you to the cross? For some people in here, they know what Calvary's like. They're suffering with the illnesses. Maybe they just got newly diagnosed with some kind of a, you know, a difficult illness. Maybe they're dealing with the grief of losing a loved one. Maybe they're just dealing with the tough stuff of life. And they know what Calvary is like. And for you, I say, try to keep walking. Because in the midst of that, resurrections, we're heading for the resurrection. But for the rest of us who are not suffering, and I'm one of them who has had an easy time of it, we're called to open our hearts to the people who are suffering. You know, a lot of times we'll say, I can't watch the news, it's too depressing. Yeah, but that's the struggle of our brothers and sisters. So it can't be too depressing for us. The woman in Gaza who lost her, ba her baby today can't turn that off. The family in Ukraine who can never go back to their home again can't turn that off. And they call us to walk with them. We can't go to Gaza, we can't go to Ukraine, but we can open our hearts to the suffering of the world. And when we open our hearts to the suffering of the world, it softens us. It makes us more compassionate. And when we're more compassionate, we can be open to the resurrection. There's no way to get to resurrection unless we've gone through the suffering in our own soul. And so I invite us to be courageous this week, and courageous throughout our lives, that we don't run from the cross when it hits us, and that when we're in good moments, we continue to look for the people who are still suffering, and say, can I carry you for a minute? Can I walk with you? Can I do something for you to make you your burden a little bit lighter? If we're not doing that, then all of Holy Week becomes a sham. Because it's not anything but a production. We're supposed to move our hearts to realize the suffering of the world. May our hearts be open and soft and wider to take on that suffering. So let us stand and confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father of the Lord, and in and Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there we will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last day. Amen. And so filled with that faith and that trust in our God, we bring our prayers to you.
for the church that we will strive to live like Jesus as we offer our lives in loving service to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations and governments throughout the world, that they will be dedicated to the cause of Christ's peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of humility, that we may not seek honor, but like Christ, offer ourselves in service to one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the elect and candidates preparing to receive the sacraments this week, that God will deepen their desire for baptism and confirmation as we welcome them to our church family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of penance, reflection, and gratitude during these upcoming days of Holy Week, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially Jacob Kraus, Dave Hendricks, and those mentioned in the Parish Book of Intentions, that through the intercession of Solanus Casey, they will be healed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Charles T. Brodnicki, whom we remember in a special way at this liturgy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I invite you, if anybody has any people they want to lift up in prayer today or any uh, intentions that they need to lift up, just ask to lift them up loudly so we can hear them. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For Susan and Wayne, who are suffering from cancer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For Charity, Lord,
And so pray, my friends, that this sacrifice and the sacrifice of our lives might be acceptable to our loving God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. For the grace of the Lord in His name, for our good and the of all His holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once and for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy and your deep love. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It's our duty, our salvation, always, everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, holy, almighty, and eternal God, in Jesus Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away all of our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels and all of our holy ancestors, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Spread throughout the world. 
Bring her to the fullness of compassion and justice and mercy, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all of us who minister in your church. And remember your servant and our brother Charles, whom we remember in a special way at this Mass. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may now also be one with him in his resurrection. We thank you for Charles' life and for all the goodness he brought to the world. And remember all of our brothers and sisters, all of those we've loved in this life, who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them now into the light of your face. And have mercy on all of us as we make our way home to you, that with Mary, the mother of God, with St. Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostles and the glorious martyrs, with Francis and Claire, bless us ones, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may join them one day and enjoy eternal life through your Son, Jesus the Christ. <coughs> with you in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
If you are able to help, please contact the parish office. Thank you for your help. There will be no private reconciliation on Saturday, March 30th. We will not have a 6.30 p.m. Mass on Easter Sunday next week. Last Friday's Bible study class that was canceled because of inclement weather will meet this Friday, March 29th at 10 a.m. There is a sign-up sheet for Holy Week in the back of the church for liturgical ministers. We still need two more volunteers to participate in the foot washing on Holy Thursday. We also have a sign up for adoration times on Thursday evening after the Mass. And join us for a hopping good time tomorrow from 11 a.m. to noon in Holly Hall. Fun activities will include an Easter egg hunt for kids ages 0 to 12, a carrot toss, face painting, and a family photo booth for parishioners of all ages. Grandchildren are welcome. We look forward to seeing you there. A flyer with details is at the back of the church. A small fee, I can show the kids where the eggs are. <laughs> I don't have to mess with it. All right. uh, birthdays this week? It's got to be birthdays during Holy Week. Right! St. Patty's Day, huh? All right, good. We ask God's blessing upon you. May this continue to shower you with His grace and His mercy. And as you begin a new year of life, may it be a grand adventure. May you realize how deeply you're loved by God and by so many others in your life. May you remain in good health. May you uh, meet new people. May you believe and change your life. So may God just give you all the graces you need during this year. And may you do the great things that he calls you to do in your life. So may God's blessing come upon you. subsidizing them and, and the man has a full-time job but they're a family of five and so um, I'm trying to work with uh, Mar uh, uh, Maria, not Maria uh, Miriam and that's the wife and she's she doesn't speak very much English at all so but she sews a lot and so uh, Larry Mothy was thinking that maybe she could do alterations so if you have something that you want to be have altered and you don't really care if it comes out good? No. We uh, <laughs> need somebody to make sure that it's, that you know, I'm not sure because we, you know, we had to do everything in sign language, so I was going, you know, like this, when you turn it up, you know. Still, so I don't even know if she understood what I was saying, but, uh, yeah, so if you have a pair of pants or something that might need to be pulled up a little bit. And, no, I, I, think she's, I think she's very good. I think she really is good, so. You know, it might be something that we can support her with. And people need alterations oftentimes. So think about it. That's all I have to say. All right. Have a good Holy Week, and let us pray. We beg you, Almighty God, that those of us you have renewed by your sacraments may become the pleasing fragrance of Christ throughout the world. 
May we walk with those who are struggling, be with those who suffer. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God.